Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to a brand new Roblox Studio video. My name is Floppy, and in today's tutorial I'm going to be going over how to make a sitable seat inside of Roblox Studio. So seats can be used for a variety of different things. You could use a seat if you're maybe having a bit of a camping game and you want them to sit on maybe like a, a chair that you've got there or like a log. Another example is if you've got a chair at a restaurant, you could add a seat into that. And also another example is a car. Let's say you wanted someone to drive a car, you'd put the seat into the car and obviously when the player either clicks E or touches or gets in close proximity of that seat, then they'll be sitting down inside of that seat. In this tutorial, we're going to go over two ways on how you can actually use seats. We're going to be going over a system where if a player walks over the seat, then they'll be put into the seating position and be sitting on that chair. We're also going to be creating a system where if a player holds down E on their keyboard or holds down a letter on their keyboard using a proximity prompt, then they will be sitting in that seat. So for starters, it really depends on how you actually want your seat to be located. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using a little bit of a chair design here. So I'm just going to go and anchor the parts here and then I'm going to go and create our chair. We're going to make it very, very simple. And this is just going to be for demonstrations. Now, obviously, you can go and change it and do whatever else you need to do. But I'm just going to quickly go and make the chair here. Alrighty, I've just finished making the model of the seat. And now keep in mind, this is just for tutorial demonstration examples, obviously go and make a much better looking seat, but this will do for now. So this is going to be where the player is going to be sitting. Now there are two ways on how you can actually do this and how you can insert a seat inside of your part. You could directly have the seat located inside of your seating area here inside this part, or you could have it separate how all these other parts are. So for example, what we can do, what you can also do, this would work great if you're wanting the player to sit on the grass, you can just click on your workspace and then you want to search up seat and it should have that little car icon you then want to click on that and as you guys can see now our seat part has inserted into the game now this is our main seat now if we had to go and join into the base plate now you'd be able to see and, if, and we walked over here we would actually be put in the seating position because when you touch it you'll be put in the seating position but now that is how you can get it there if you want it to be separately now for example let's say now we have this chair and we wanted the player to sit down on the chair, we would put it just like that. Now, obviously you can see, okay, it's black, it's got a black color and it's not very transparent and it's kind of, it doesn't, it, it, it won't work great in our seat. Now to easily fix that, you obviously just go and lower your seat into the other part there. You click anchor and then you just go and change the transparency. Now, depending on how you want the player to be sitting, the position that you want the player to be and um, how you actually want it all to be laid out and set up will depend on, on on your preferences. So you may have to go and actually do a couple of testings here and seeing what would work best for you. But if we had to go and join into this base plate now, you'll be able to see if we go run over our part or go and touch our part, or sorry, go and touch our seat, we'll be put into the seating position on this main chair. Now keep in mind, this is the one that has the seat not inside of the part. So if we go and run here now, and as you guys can see, I've got the seat the wrong way. So you obviously need to go and do your own testing to make sure that you have the seat the correct way. Now, if we had this the opposite direction, obviously we would be looking down over that way. As you guys can see, the bottom part of my body isn't actually touching the seat. So obviously that is very, there again, where you need to go and move your part down, go and adjust it to whatever your design or your setup is actually like to make it work for you. So now currently we've got our seat located in the main workspace. Now it doesn't matter if you have it in the work, the, with the workspace or if you have it in the actual part right here. It all works the exact same, but ideally if you're wanting to add, for example, an E button to enter the seat, you'd need it in that special part. So I'm gonna go and move it here. So click on your seat, click, go to parent, and then I'm gonna go and insert it on our main seat part here. And as you guys can see, our main seat hasn't gone anywhere. It's all still there and it, it works the complete same. All, it, all we've gone and done is made the parent the, the main seat part. So if we go click on play now and we go test out, I've also just gone and rotated it to go and make sure that we're pointing the right direction. As you guys can see, now once I touch that uh, sitting part, you're able to see, okay, now we are pointing away from the back. So we're, we're pointing in the right direction, but the bottom part of our body still could come down a little bit. So obviously we would just lower 
the main seat part a little more to make it a bit more realistic you could even move the legs or move the part a little bit over so that the legs are not colliding with our main part there Alrighty, I've just gone and done the final adjustments here. So if we go touch our part here on our seat, you'll be able to see that the bottom part of my body is now looking like it's sitting on the part and also our legs are hanging over. You could move the legs over a slight bit more, but I feel that would work perfect for a Roblox seat. So that, as you guys can see, to sit on our seat, we just go and touch the part and then you'll be put into the seating position and you just click space to exit. All right, so now for system two. How System 2 is going to work is a player is going to have to click on or hold down E on a proximity prompt to be able to be seated. Now we're going to be using a proximity prompt for this, obviously depending on what you want your proximity activator button to be, you're able to also adjust that. So for starters we're going to do exactly and work with what exactly we have, is we've got the main seat located inside of our main part here, which is our main seat part there obviously. Now, you can also go and put the seat in workspace. It's gonna work exactly the same. It's completely up to you. But other than that, we go click on the plus button next to our part, and now we wanna insert a proximity prompt. We then wanna click on our proximity prompt, and then we are able to adjust the properties of our proximity prompt. So you're able to change a variety of different things. For starters, we're gonna change the action text from interact to sit, because basically this is the text that is displayed when a player is in the radius of that proxim proximity prompt. So for example, we'll go and change it to sit. So when we get in that range of the proximity prompt, it says sit or E to sit, for example. You're also able to adjust the whole duration. I'm gonna set this to one, but on default it is set to zero. So basically the moment the player clicks E, they're gonna be sat down, but I'm gonna have a whole duration of one second. You are also able to adjust the key code which the player actually has to click to be able to sit down. With On default it is set to E, that is what most people continue to use nowadays. Um, but let's say you wanted to go and change it to S for example, for sit, you can go and change it to S just by clicking on, on E there and then a drop down menu comes, comes there. But uh, I'm gonna keep it at E and then you can also change the max activation distance depending on how far away you want the player to be able to click E. I feel 10 is okay, but if you want the player to be able to activate it from over here, you'd maybe wanna increase that a bit, but test it out and see what would work best for you. Now that you've inserted your proximity prompt and you've gone and adjusted it here, click on the plus button next to the proximity prompt and insert a script. So now that you've inserted the script inside of your proximity prompt, you wanna go down to the description of this video, copy and paste the code that is in the description, bring it back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code by either Control V or right click paste, and then you will have this new code. So basically what happens here on line one, it goes local proximity prompt. We're basically identifying on what proximity prompt actually equals. This is also known as a variable. So local proximity prompt equals script.parent. So we're basically identifying on what our proximity prompt is, which is our script.theparent, and the parent of our script is proximity prompt. This is a great thing to actually use in your coding, especially if you are using the word proximity prompt or you're trying to identify or use your proximity prompt multiple places in your script. So as you guys can see here, when I go and click on proximity prompt, this is used for a variety of other things, especially when we go and actually identify our seat, which we are using. For example here, local seat equals proximity prompt, then the parent of the proximity prompt, which is our part, and then we go down to seat and we're basically identifying seat using our proximity prompt. Same thing here in the local function and also down here on line 16. So as mentioned there, that is basically identifying our seat exactly how the local proximity prompt works also. Then we have gone and created a local function which is called handle occupancy change. And this basically handles when the proximity prompt is enabled and when it is disabled. So as mentioned here, this will enable the prompt if there is no occupant and disable it if there is one. So if someone is sitting inside of our seat, then the proximity prompt is gonna be disabled. But if some, no one is sitting in, in, in the seat, then the proximity prompt is gonna be enabled, allowing people to go and actually sit on our seat because it's no good having the proximity prompt enabled when someone else is sitting and then they can't sit. So we go and disable it when someone is sitting in it and when no one is sitting in it, then it enables. So that creates a local function, which we then go and use here on line eight. So then basically what happens here on line eight, it goes to the seat and then we get the property called occupant. So we're doing exactly the same thing that we did on line four. We are creating another local function here on line 10, local function handle proximity trigger. 
basically what happens here is we are now handling what is going to happen when the proximity prompt is triggered which happens later down here so if the proximity prompt is triggered we basically go if player dot character so if a player has the character and player dot character dot humanoid then the seat and then we go and sit which is basically an event player dot character dot humanoid now the reason is something else I, i'm going to add here on line 11 the reason why we need to make sure that the player has the character and then also has the humanoid is because this is necessary when we are actually wanting to do this next line because let's say your player does not have yet the character or the humanoid this will not work this will this will create an error and the player will not be seated this basically makes make sure that the player does have x character and, hu and humanoid as these are needed to make the script function correctly as also noted there here in the script now this basically seats it and then down here it goes end end and then it goes proximity prompt dot triggered connect and then handle proximity prompt trigger so when the proximity prompt is triggered it will then go and do this function so now that I've gone over the code, I'm gonna head up here next to our script, click on the X button. And now there's one last thing we need to do before we can go and test it. We wanna head over here to Explorer, and then we wanna find our seat. Now, also, something I should also point out here, depending if you go and change the name of your seat, you'll also need to change that right here. But I would recommend just keep your name, your, your seat name as seat, so that it doesn't mess up anything there. But you wanna head over to your seat, and then you wanna go down to the properties. And we wanna scroll all the way down to the bottom and until you find an area called control. Where it says disabled, we wanna go and tick that box. Now basically what will happen when this is disabled, you're able to go and actually walk onto the part and then it will, it will seat you. But now if we go and enable this, basically ticking it, if we go and try walk onto the part here now, it will not allow us to sit down. And then, obviously our proximity prompt is going to function everything from there where it makes us only be able to um, sit on the part if a player holds down E on the proximity prompt. So once you've gone and enabled that, head up here, click on play to go test it out and then we'll be able to see that we need to hold down E to be able to sit on that part. So as you guys can see we're now in the base plate, here now, here's our fabulous looking chair and now if we go try walk onto the part that we were doing just before on uh, system one, you're able to see anywhere I walk now, we're not able to sit down on the chair and we can't sit down how we did on system one. We can only sit down if we go and hold down E on the seat here. So if we go hold down E, the proximity prompt is uh, putting it there on the part. If we hold down E now, one second hold duration and as you guys can see, we are now sitting on the part and now there is no longer a proximity prompt and as you guys can see obviously you go and change the position of your seat but as you guys can see we are now sitting on our part we can have a lovely table here maybe a coffee and scone you know and perfect your cafe is done but if we want to go and now exit this chair we just simply jump and as you guys can see now our proximity back is back here if we hold down e again for one second sitting on the chair no longer a proximity prompt if you guys are a little bit lost, you don't really know what you're doing, feel free to create a ticket in my Discord server and we will happily help you out. But anyway guys, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you did enjoy, I really do appreciate it. If you do consider subscribing to the channel, turning on the notification bell and make sure that you have the notification bell and all notifications so you never miss one of these uploads. But if you did really enjoy today, please do also consider liking the video. I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see everyone in the next Roblox Studio video.